This is Rock and Roll Radio. Come on, let's rock and roll with the remote. We could blow this place apart if we wanted to. My first gig, I actually had the urge to jump into the audience because I was so used to being there. Hello everybody, welcome to the Ramones Nerdcast. My name is Flo, I am the founder of the Ramones Museum in Berlin. On the previous episode of the Nerdcast, we introduced you to Johnny Ramone, the Ramones guitar player. Today, we would like to talk about Joey Ramone, the Ramones singer and one of the main songwriters of the band. For this episode, we're once again very happy to announce two special guests. CJ Ramon, the Ramones' longtime bass player, and Monty A. Melnick, the Ramones' longtime tour manager and the author of the great book, On the Road with the Ramones. Joey Ramon was born Jeffrey Ross Hyman on May 19, 1951. Like any other Ramones member, he grew up in Forest Hills, Queens, and he attended Forest Hills High School. Joey was very shy and very tall. He was 6.3 inches, maybe even taller. He was very pale and very gangly. Joey had weak eyes and various other health issues that he carried around for all of his life. When Joey was a teen, he was diagnosed with OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, which made him perform certain routines repeatedly. Switching the lights on and off all night, tapping doorknobs or stepping up and down the sidewalk for an hour. Longtime Ramones tour manager Monty A. Melnick remembers the effects that Joey's OCD had on himself and on the band. Well, you know, in the early years, uh, Joey, uh, nobody knew what was wrong with him, you know. He was like, uh, they didn't understand what OCD was in the early years. We always thought, man, it's what are you doing? You're, they thought they, they, they was crazy, you know. Well, you know, eventually they realized it was a chemical imbalance. It was called OCD, and he got some help for it. But, yeah, I had to help him because if he uh, – initially I would make sure he was packed and had all his medicine and whatever he needed on the road. Otherwise, if he went on the road, and I would have to go and get stuff. So it was easier for me to make sure he had all the stuff before he went on the road and then help him. Of course, I had to go up and get him out of the, his, his – uh, house and downstairs everybody's waiting for him you know it was, a, it was very stressful and uh i did help him a lot then johnny kind of said well you're favoring him it wasn't really it was it was helping him really you know before the ramones joey was a hippie around 1973 he got into glitter and joined a band called sniper at first joey was a drummer in the ramones when he couldn't keep up with johnny and Dee, Dee tommy suggested him to be the singer the first song Joey ever wrote was a tune called I Don't Care. Later on in the Ramones' career, he was a brain behind some of their biggest hits, Sheena as a Punk Rocker or I Wanna Be Sedated. After Joey had separated from his girlfriend, Linda Danielle, in around 1982, him and Monty became very close friends. They both started dating sisters, Camille and Angela, and they got together for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners. Monty remembers a time when him and Joey spent a lot of time not only on the road, but also off the road. At that time, uh, my girlfriend, Camille's sister, Angela, I, I introduced them together, and uh, Joey started going out with Angela. Then we were, I hung out a lot with Joey. Joey would you know, invite me over to a Thanksgiving dinner with his mother and Christmas dinners, and I'd bring him upstate to visit people. So I get, became very friendly with him. It was terrific, you know. So, I mean, Johnny saw that as I'm favoring him. But, you know, really, I mean, somebody had to help him, basically, and I was helping him, you know. And as I said, I had to do that because if I didn't... Uh, It'd be more work for me later on the road, you know. I, if I didn't bring my dad, I didn't bring my this. Or I had no medicine's not there. My if I didn't bring my socks. <laughs> Borrows the socks from Johnny, by the way. Um, <laughs> he'd never do that. Other than Johnny, who would go straight home after the shows or to the hotel, Joey liked to socialize and go out. Joey was a familiar face for the stuff at clubs, bars, or events in New York City. Joey, what'd you think of tonight's show? Some of it I liked, you know. And then some of it I thought was a little dull, you know? But I, I thought Eddie Murphy, I thought he stole the show. I thought he was the best. In the 80s, Joey was known to throw some of the biggest parties in New York, introducing the city to new trends and talents. Joey was a Democrat and he was active in political campaigns. After the Ramones had retired, Joey worked on his solo album and he focused on promoting new talents. 
Joey was diagnosed with lymphoma around 1994, but he kept his disease in check until late 2000. Monty remembers the last encounters that he had with Joey before Joey passed away on Easter Sunday, April 15, 2001, at the age of 49. Very sick. Went up there and visited him a couple of days or a week before he passed away. That was a sad thing, you know. Good friend, you know, passing away. He's struggling with what he had. It was a shame because... Uh, you know, he he had it under control a little bit with the medicine for his lymphoma, and then he fell down in the winter time, broke his hip, and they had to take him off the medicine, and then it just got aggressive, too aggressive, and so it took over. I think probably he would would have had it under control for a long time if he stayed on the medicine. It's a sad thing. Once again, we welcome C.J. Ramon as our special guest on the Nerdcast today. C.J. will tell us all about his relationship with Joey Ramon and what it was like to be friends with Joey and to play in a band with him. Joey's character, his um, his real character, and I don't mean, you know, the caricature of Joey Ramone, I mean his character. Joey was intensely intelligent and, and just had a really great sense of humor. I think I probably shared more laughs with Joey, you know, privately outside of the band than with anybody else. You know, we hung out quite a bit. There was some things that I learned about Joey with a, that I never would have guessed. Um, he could be short-tempered, he could be um, self-centered, but he was all heart. Literally, he was all heart. Joey was just all heart. He felt everything, and he quietly dealt with things on his own most of the time. You, you would never be able to tell what was happening um, in Joey's life. And I'm not talking about his health or anything like that. I mean, you know, the personal stuff. You would, ne you would never be able to tell what his personal struggles, what personal struggles he was going through or dealing with. And and he suffered a lot. You know, he had a lot of inner, um, inner demons that um, he struggled with his whole life. But he got up and did it every day. He just got up and went to work every day. You know, the, the classic example is, you know, he was diagnosed in 94 with uh, lymphoma. And for the next two years, dragged his way through two, two years of touring with the Ramones, which was not a light schedule. So Joey was reliable. If I called him up and I was in a bad spot, I, I knew he would help me out. And, you know, as far as friends go, that's really all you can ask for. That's the most you can ask for from a friend is just be there when I need you. And that was Joey. If you would like to see more episodes of the Nerdcast and the Nerdcast Blitz, please be so kind and head over to ramonsmuseum.com and join the Nerd Club. With your membership, you support the Nerdcast team and you will also get closer to your favorite band. Whether you want to ask CJ Ramon your personal question or you would just like to wear our Nerdcast t-shirt, then please sign up for one of the memberships. Thanks again for watching. If you like, please subscribe our channel on YouTube and I'll see you again on the next episode of the Ramones Nerdcast. Until then, gabe gabe hey.